Development containers are a specification being developed at Microsoft that allows you to attach your IDE to a Docker container containing your development environment. At the time of recording, the only IDEs that have solid support for dev containers are VS Code and IntelliJ. So if you don't use these IDEs, this video is probably not going to be too practical for you. To easily follow along, you'll need at least a rudimentary understanding of the following tools slash concepts. Docker, Docker Desktop, VS Code, i.e. the world's most popular application for editing code, VS Code extensions, particularly you will need the Docker extension and the dev containers extension. Installing these extensions should only take a few clicks and a few seconds. And also general software development concepts like Git, CLI commands, APIs, and programming languages will definitely help you out with following along. Here we are starting with an empty folder on our computer. Let's start by creating a dot dev container folder at the root of our project. Inside of this folder, let's create an empty file called devcontainer.json. What should we put in this file, you might ask? Well, if we take a look at the official dev container spec, we'll see all of the individual keys we could specify, but to get us moving along, I'll just paste in this JSON content right here. This devcontainer.json file is where we specify the details of our development container. The name key is where we specify the name we want to give our dev container. This is arbitrary. The build key is where we put the reference to the Docker file that will act as the base point of our development environment. This will make more sense later. The customizations key is where we can customize many things. Here we're customizing which VS Code extensions we want installed into the VS Code instance that gets attached to our development container. Line 18, I don't think we need, but I put it here because it doesn't hurt. This is where we can specify which ports on our host machine will get forwarded to ports on our container. The workspace mount is where we specify the location inside of the development container that our project files will get mounted into. On line 22, we have a key that says workspace folder. This is the folder that will get opened by default when we open our development container. And on line 23, we have an empty run args array. This is where we can specify some further customizations that we're not going to need for the moment. Next, we'll add the Docker file referenced on line four. This will give us most of the software we need for our development environment. And I will populate this file with the following content. You remember how I suggested you install the Docker VS Code extension? This functionality where you can right click and inspect what's going on is powered by that extension. We're using 312 slim. Anyways, in this tutorial, I'm using VS code. So I'll show you how I like to open the development container. There are other techniques for doing so like running scripts to open it, or you can follow other techniques that use other IDEs. But like I said, I'm just going to show you how to do it with VS code for now. Shift command P. This will open up the command palette as it's so called. And I can locate an option that says, dev containers reopen in container. I will select this by pressing enter. And now our development container is being built. If I pull up Docker desktop, we can see that we currently have no containers that are registered with this application. After the development container has been built, we will see it listed here. Two very boring minutes later. Okay, that took about two to three minutes for me. Note, the first time you run a Docker container, it will tend to be very slow. But as Docker caches a lot of files on your behalf, subsequent runs of your container will tend to be faster. Also note, if for some reason you have to edit either the dev container specification or the Docker file, you will probably need to rebuild your development container and take that two to three minute hit of wait time where you're waiting for the container to be rebuilt. Also note that we are using a specific version of a Python container called Python 12 Slim. This is a version of a Python container that gives us Python, but strips out a lot of unnecessary files in order to keep our development environment super lean. Let's quickly smoke test this development container to make sure it's legit. 
Let's check and make sure we have Git installed. We do. Let's make sure we have curl installed. We do. Let's make sure we have Python installed. We do. And let's double check which version of Linux we're using. Debian. So at this point, we have pretty much most of what we need to develop any Python application.